Hello, let's start talking about PCOS hair loss. I want to give you an overview of what you can do or what you should do if you think that your PCOS is causing hair loss so that you feel empowered to have conversations with your physician and um, take a natural lifestyle approach at home as well. Um, so the first thing I wanna say is that I'm so sorry this is happening to you. That is an extremely stressful experience losing your hair. I haven't personally gone through it, but I've worked alongside women who are struggling with hair loss and it breaks my heart. It really does. So I'm so sorry this is happening to you. And the next thing I want to say is you need to take this very seriously. This isn't you being vain about your hair. Um, hair loss is a serious sign of something going wrong in your body. So um, even if you're just kind of suspicious that you might be losing your hair, it's time to go see a doctor and to be aggressive about uh, addressing the issue. Okay, next up. A lot of times PCOS is not the only reason or even the reason you are losing your hair. So it's important to rule out other issues. Um, the number one issue being an underactive or low thyroid. Now this is a really common like other diagnosis that comes along with having PCOS and um, sometimes it gets overlooked because you're not given the right or enough blood test by your physician to properly rule out a thyroid problem. So I'm gonna quickly list off which um, tests I would kind of insist on getting um, from my doctor if I thought I was losing my hair and might have a thyroid problem. So TSH, free, F-R-E-E, T3, free, T4, anti TPO, um, reverse T3, and then anti-thyroid globulin. Woo! That was a mouthful. I'll put it in the in the notes section below. Um, but just getting your thyroid stimulating hormone checked isn't enough to fully rule out a thyroid problem. And anyone that tells you that it is, I mean, if you're losing your hair, I'd push back on that um, for sure. Okay, so other things that can cause um, a hair loss are anemia, so low iron, you wanna get that ruled out autoimmune diseases of all kinds, and heavy metal exposure. And this is particularly relevant for um, maybe women that work in an industry like uh, artists, jewelry makers, um, maybe you work in a factory setting. Um, but even if you just like maybe in the past or in general have like maybe never eaten organic food or you've eaten a lot of seafood or, or whatever, it's worth bringing up with your physician. Um, so those are some of the things you wanna rule out before you just say, okay, it's my PCOS causing the hair loss. Now, how does PCOS cause hair loss? It is, again, part of this vicious cycle where there's this play between high androgens and high insulin aggravating your ovaries, causing your androgens to rise. And in, for some reason in women with PCOS, it seems like as our, if we have higher androgens, they also convert more quickly to a substance called DHT. And um, when you have more DHT when you should or it's out of balance, it actually impacts your hair follicles and it kind of just shuts them down. It doesn't kill them, okay? So there's hope. It's not killing your hair follicles. There's a way to kind of roll this um, cycle back. And that's the good news. Okay, so now you're wondering what can I do myself without the help of my physician or um, to kind of just stop this cycle of high androgens, high DHT. Well, um, the long-term solutions are to start addressing your diet to make sure that you're not making insulin resistance worse and driving up those androgens day after day with your food choices. I'm not gonna get into diet here. I have other videos on that but a really standard up the middle PCOS friendly diet is gonna go a long way over the long term to helping this situation. Um, also, you wanna consider whether or not your diet is maybe inflammatory. Systemic inflammation tends to be a problem with hair loss as well. So um, in, just, in general, having an inflammatory lifestyle. So things like um, eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of refined sugars, those are inflammatory things and not eating a lot of anti-inflammatory foods like healthy omega fats and uh, vegetables and fruits um, can cause you to have systemic inflammation and this can impact the health of your hair. 
Um, also, if you have poor gut health, so if your digestion's a problem, that's a sign that you might have some systemic inflammation. And um, like smoking, drinking, not sleeping enough, those are all inflammatory lifestyle choices that may have an impact on your hair health. All right, so addressing your insulin resistance, or even if it's subclinical, even if you're not testing positive for insulin resistance at the doctor's office, through exercise and a PCOS-friendly diet, and trying to lower the inflammatory activities you do, smoking, drinking, eating lots of sugar, um, eating lots of processed foods, and increasing the restorative anti-inflammatory things you do, getting enough sleep, um, eating fruits and vegetables, you know, real simple stuff, um, avoiding sugar, uh, can really help with your long-term outcome. Now let's talk about supplements. Um, so I did some research on supplements and um, one thing I found that was really interesting is there's some research about um, saw palmetto and what it does is it helps kind of slow down that conversion of your testosterone to DHT which is the the stuff that causes your hair to fall out so um, in particular taking saw palmetto in combination with the zinc seems to be a particularly beneficial combination for hair loss that said there are no studies on saw palmetto in pcos they're just done in hair loss studies and mostly in men but i think it's worth a shot and i will link below to a supplement i found by a source i trust um, that was formulated with saw palmetto oil to, to, <laughs> to help with um, hair loss so um, I think that uh, that could be a good option for you. Also, um, there have been studies that show that 30 milligrams of zinc every day in and of itself can be helpful with hair loss. And again, that whole um, high androgens converting into DHT and damaging your hair follicle cycle. Other supplements that um, lower uh, androgens are spearmint tea which you just drink as tea, two cups a day. There's only one study in women with PCOS that have taken this, but it's kind of a really simple, low risk way to give lowering your androgens a shot. So two cups of spearmint tea, not peppermint tea every day. And then um, and another supplement I think makes just a lot of sense is just a good omega supplement. Um, there's a correlation between low omega-3s and high androgens. And um, so this is a way that you can maybe bring down your androgens and improve your heart health and brain health. Omega-3s are great for the heart and brain. And I think we all want heart, healthy hearts and brains along with healthy hair. So that could be a good option for you as well. Okay, so to recap, your long-term solutions are to get in to see a physician and rule out other causes and then start yourself on a PCOS anti-inflammatory lifestyle that is going to help quell this vicious cycle of hormonal problems that is causing your hair loss. Then you might wanna look into these supplements, zinc, saw, palmetto, spearmint tea, and omegas. All right, if you have had um, hair loss success story, please share it below. There are women right now who are just seeing a bunch of hair in the shower drain every morning and it's depressing them and they want to know that there's hope. Um, so if you could comment below on your hair loss success story, that would be amazing. So thank you in advance and hit subscribe and like to get more information about how you can have an awesome life even if you have PCOS.